What is up, Rad Potential YouTube? Welcome to a Rad Formational video. We're using Little Stu as an example, and we're gonna talk about rotary engine, or I guess not even rotary engine, Mazda RX-7 wiring. Okay, first things first. Before we get into talking about wiring on this specific car, I wanna give you guys a brief rundown. If you don't understand electronics, if you don't understand wiring, if you don't understand voltage, current, et cetera, et cetera, I'm gonna give you a brief rundown and then I'm gonna kind of show you a multimeter that would be awesome um, to have, or at least have the capabilities of something like this for your, for your problems, for your car, okay? So first things first, voltage, current, V equals IR, all right? Voltage equals current times resistance, all right? Think of electricity like water, okay? A wire is gonna be like a hose. If the hose is cut, you're not gonna get water out the other end. Same thing with wiring. If the hose has a short, you're not gonna get as much power as you need. Or if the wire has a short, you're not gonna get as much power as you need. If the hose has a leak, you're not gonna get as much water as you need, right? Now, how do you test wiring, okay? I guess there's two ways. One, you wanna see if you got water coming out the other end, right? So voltage, you get you a multimeter that tells you voltage you can see if you have power at the component you're needing to turn on i.e do you have voltage to turn on a headlight okay the other way to make sure that your wiring is good is called continuity this is making sure that one end of the wire is reaching the other end of the wire and that's where you might have to get a little bit better of a multimeter than just the cheap you know five dollar ones you want one that when you touch one end of a wire and touch the other end of the wire together, it beeps. That means that electricity going through the wire reaches the other end, okay? So that's the general rundown that I wanna give you before we start. The next bit I wanna tell you about, okay? If you don't have a repair manual for your car or you haven't found like the fox.ca website or RX-7 Central or whatever that has repair manuals scanned in as PDFs on the internet, I suggest finding one of these on eBay or, or wherever you can get it, a Haynes repair manual for an RX-7 for your car. And that's gonna help you a ton when it comes to just understanding the layout of the wiring. Okay, where do wires go? What do things connect to? What switch does what? What color wire means what, right? In these books, you've got, and you've seen me reference them before, you have diagrams showing the dash, where all the wires go. You've got even more detailed diagrams here, like showing you that the light blue powers the stereo wire and that the, you know, white red wire powers the heated window relay, you know, all that stuff, right? All of those different things that you need to know about your car are gonna be in one of these books and that is gonna help you to understand what connects to what, what also like one wire might power five different things um, and why it runs where it runs, okay? Yes, you can Google image search stuff. Yes, you can look on RX-7 Club, but I don't think all the like, you know, photo bucket links are all still working, right? If you're an old school forum guy. So get your repair manual, especially if you're new to working on cars and new to RX-7s, this is a huge help. Now, little stoop, the wiring, okay? So say you've rescued a car, okay? Or you've just got your RX-7, it doesn't run, you need to figure out what's doing what. You hook the battery up right here, boom, you turn the key on, nothing happens, okay? Just like tracing or chasing or following wires, you can generally figure it out by following one wire through stuff. It gets tricky when they have them all electrical taped up. Now, on an RX-7, little stew right here. Main power from the battery, you got a fuse block right here. You can see that this wire, this big black wire connects to the battery, connects to there, very visual. You can see that, right? Now, these big fusible links, you know, all the power from that obviously goes through the fusible link and then goes out there somewhere, okay? You can see right here, we got a white with a red stripe wire. Main power for the whole car, white with red stripe. Now, the wiring comes from this main fuse block and goes into the cabin, all right? Now I have the dash all apart so we can see all this stuff. From there, the main power from that fuse block is gonna come to your key switch and there's gonna be things in the key switch that are powered you know, you're gonna have voltage here, okay, without turning the key on. And then when you turn the key on, it connects things inside of this that then turn on all the other components, right? That make your 
turn signals work, that make your gauges come on, that makes the starter spin. Okay, so from the key switch, the power for your car is going to then come to the main cabin fuse block right here. You can see that white with red wire, right? And you may have things on here that are powered regardless of the key being on as well. Okay, especially on newer cars, there are things that like a security system, this, that, and the other that stay hot all the time. Hot meaning positive voltage from the battery. Okay, these fuses, old school cars, glass fuses, are basically like a restrictor or a light hose or like a really thin wall hose, right? That when you stomp on it at the end or it has a kink or whatever, or it shorts out, that it pops the fuse and shuts the water off so that way you don't have flooding, right? You don't get too much water going somewhere. You don't have too much electricity. You don't start a fire, don't do whatever. So that's what fuses do. When it shorts out, these break, no more power going that way, okay? The fuse block's generally mounted to your dash. You've got it like this. From here, these wires come out and go and run all your components. They'll come from here, they'll go to like your brake switch, and then the wire goes back to the side of the cabin to turn the brake lights on. You've got wires that come through here to turn your fuel pump on. You've got wires that come from here up into the gauge cluster to run, you know, like your bright switch light and your turn signal and all that sort of stuff. This group of wires goes over there and runs all the heater controls and your radio. Okay, so on an RX-7, the main hub of wiring is right here under the cowl, under the dash, right? And that's where if you get a mouse nest in there, I feel real sorry for you because that's going to be not fun to fix and have to chase all those wires around. So once you've established and kind of gotten familiar with where the wiring's at on your car, where things that are doing what are happening and, and where they're at, okay? The next thing you wanna start doing is figure out if you don't have power, right? So it's trying to troubleshoot, getting things to turn on. You wanna figure out where you're losing power, okay? So if you know you've got power through the fuse block, you know you've got power to that red with white wire, you know you've got power at the key with the red with white wire, but when you turn the key on, you still have no power, the key switch could be broken, right? If you know you're getting power to the fuse block, but you're not getting power out of the fuse block, right? Maybe the fuse is blown, you can't see it. Maybe the fuse connections right here are corroded, okay? And that's the next thing to start checking. Corroded connections, rust, dirt, water, humidity, all those things can corrode a connection. And what would happen is basically the inside of this connector, you can see the blades, okay? Those blades would get all crusty and dirty and basically become insulated from each other, thus not allowing electricity to flow through them, okay? Same thing with ground wires, all right? Those little bolts with the eyelet wire that you just screw in in random places throughout the car. There's one back here in the center of this that connects right underneath the pop hat or the hatch popper. If that one's not hooked up, your taillights do really funny things. So like checking those, making sure those connections are clean. Cleaning a connection can be as simple as Taking a piece of sandpaper, scrubbing the crap off of it. Taking a Scotch-Brite pad, scrubbing the crap off of it. I've found cleaning those fuses, if you take a piece of sandpaper and roll it up, you can slide it through, clean that stuff off. You can use a soda blaster, blast out the connector, hit it with some electrical contact cleaner or something. You know, there's all sorts of different ways to clean connections, but if the connections are dirty, connections are broken, connections aren't happening, things aren't going to work. So, for example, on Little Stew, I had to clean all the fuse connections in here. All those glass fuses were all corroded. You can still see some of them are. I was sitting here and I could wiggle these back and forth and things would turn off and on. That means you don't have a good connection and you should clean it. That's where I started having issues. I also had issues up here where the fusible links were all kind of crappy. So those all got cleaned. You know, we rewired the ignition, so we got rid of a bunch of the ignition wiring, but if you're keeping the old ignition wiring, all those little eyelets that see exposed moisture metal, you know, right up in here, under these little grommet things, those can get corroded, you never know, okay? So, your multimeter, real quick, how can you use the multimeter to check and help you with corrosion stuff, right? You can check continuity to see if things are grounded, right? You can take this, hook it up to what would be the grounded side of a component and then hook it to the, the chassis and make sure that you have a ground. You can have voltage somewhere, but if it's not grounded, it's not gonna work, right? You haven't completed the circuit, okay? Same thing, use this to check the voltage at components as well. Now, with all that being said, I can't exactly make videos documenting every single 
nuance of different RX-7s and their wiring. Okay, so you're going to notice this is a 79. This is about as simple as it gets. Your RX-2s, 3s, 4s, repos are much like this one. Okay, everything's pretty much on the left-hand side, the driver's side of the car, right? And there's nothing really that goes to the passenger side. On the later model RX-7s, okay so now we're going to step into 84 85 fds fcs you're going to have the engine harness the efi harness that's coming out of the passenger side and running everything on your engine that's going to open up a whole new can of worms for places you could have electrical issues all right the ecu generally re resides for shindor creek where all that coolant is okay so you've seen on the rally car if you haven't seen that build series go check it out the rally car is a GSLSE. It has an ECU with a floor plate. Wiring harness all comes out of here. And that side of the car talks to this side of the car. Okay, same thing. There's grounds over here. There's connections over here. There's all sorts of stuff. But don't let wiring intimidate you guys. Wiring is super simple. Like I said, think of it like water. You got a garden hose. You need water to get from one place to the other to make the sprinkler work. That sprinkler is a headlight. That sprinkler is a power mirror. That sprinkler is you know, your hatch release, right? If the water can't get there, it's not gonna work, right? And if the water you send there can't drain out of that spot, right, the ground, if it can't drain away, then that thing's not gonna work. It's gonna be flooded full of stuff. It's gonna have the wrong voltage. It's gonna not be happy. So think of it like that. That's the easiest way that I can help you guys explain it. So as always, guys, comment below with any questions comment below with anything anything that you want me to cover in detail. I have videos testing your gauge wiring on the channel. Um, I have videos, I guess with this one, we got it running, doing the fuel pump wiring, kind of understanding that. I have videos documenting how to wire the electronic ignition to one of these cars. You know, so this video is mostly serves as like the blanket. If you've never looked up wiring and you're having issues, how to kind of understand things, where to maybe start attacking stuff. Um, but, comment below with any questions I'll do my best to answer them if you have more specific questions and you want to know for sure you want to actually get in touch with me about things I do have a patreon set up for the channel okay rad potential on patreon I love all the guys that are over there supporting thank you guys very much but that is where if you become a member of the patreon I check that every morning two three times a day you can ask the guys over there I'm really good at responding to that stuff I try to post you know, over there at least once every two weeks, once a week, post a video for them that you guys don't get to see. Everything that I post on Patreon, um, those videos will never make it to real YouTube, so it's exclusive stuff. Go check it out. I would love to have you guys support the channel over there. Any support you guys can give is much appreciated, and that's going to help me give you guys more content with not only these cars, but other cars that I have sitting around here as well that don't quite make it into the, the weekly run of videos or, or fall into the production schedule. As, you know, as fancy as that sounds, we do kind of have, I have a list of things that I make and order and whatever. But anyway, you guys can support, be much appreciated. And if supporting is watching the videos and subscribing to the channel, that is awesome. So anything you guys can give, I love seeing the feedback, love all the support and, uh, and the views. You guys have been watching the, the little stew videos, so it's been epic. But with that, I will leave you guys. Thank you guys very much for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Keep it red. Hey, come here. It's cold. What are you doing? Taking forever. Hey, can you sit? Yeah. You ready to go back to the office, do some work, spend some time in the daylight? No? Peace, guys.